It's no news that we all use maps to do our jobs. There are often problems using them in the traditional paper form, particularly when we can't seem to get the right information in the right format when we need it. There should be a better way. GRASS is a Geographic Information System, or GIS. It's a better way to manage, store, and use your mapped information. GRASS is simply a computerized system which stores, analyzes, and displays different types of mapped information. GRASS supports installation managers in carrying out their mission with higher reliability in a cost-effective manner. GISs reduce costs improve result and conclusions, produce more defendable data, and are more acceptable to the public. GRASS is currently established at Forts McClellan, Hood, and Lewis, and the Yakima Firing Center, as well as National Guard Bureau headquarters. It will be established soon at several additional Army locations, as well as other governmental agencies. So don't keep your information about soils, vegetation, roads, or archaeological sites rolled up in map tubes or stuffed into drawers. Keep it in a computer. Grass can consist of any number of different layers, with each layer representing a different theme. These layers are related or registered to the same map base, so they can be overlaid onto each other automatically without ever having to adjust scales or match coordinates first. GRASS eliminates many of the problems which occur with paper maps. GRASS can also let you use the information on your installation in ways which would be difficult or impossible with more traditional techniques. Let's see how. Finding the map of a particular feature is not a problem with GRASS. All the map layers are kept in a computer. You have immediate access to any layer such as elevation, streams, or to any combination of layers. To relate maps of different scales on paper can be difficult and tedious. With GRASS, all of your layers are registered to the same base, so you can combine maps of different scales automatically. Don't be limited in the types of map combinations and overlays you can cope with manually. You can combine any number of layers to produce new maps. You can see where certain specified combinations of features occur. Updating a paper map is a bother. Changes can mean the entire map has to be redrawn by hand. Unless you happen to have a full-time artist on your staff, producing made-to-order maps by hand is not possible. Because the data in GRASS are in a computer system, keeping installation information up to date is straightforward and systematic. You can also keep track of changes over time and get an updated paper copy right away when you need it. GRASS lets you display your information quickly in a tremendous variety of formats, sizes, scales, and colors. In addition, a user can overlay layers to find where certain unique combinations of features exist, much as Ian McHarg proposed in his book, Design with Nature. You can create entirely new layers for your installation by combining existing maps in various ways. These new layers can be added to GRASS. On your installation, GRASS can be used to help answer questions about installation resources. Answers like critical habitat zones for endangered species such as red cocated woodpeckers. Or legally required noise contour zones which impact civilian areas. These can be generated for public presentation or for inclusion in environmental impact assessments or statements. Other questions may deal with finding the amount of highly erodible soil present on a new multi-purpose range complex, or potential hazardous waste landfill sites, or the location of areas which will be within a proposed firing range safety fan. Grass can also be used to monitor changes or trends in installation resources, 
It can compute areas, lengths, distances, or do profiles of topographic elevations automatically. How can these capabilities be applied to your installation? Suppose you need to know where undiscovered archaeological sites are most likely to occur. If locations of known archaeological sites can be correlated with combinations of environmental features, such as vegetation types, soil types, elevations, or nearness to water, grass can be used to display other areas at the installation where these same combinations of features occur. You have thereby created a map of potential archaeological site locations. This same approach can be used to find potential recreation areas, like game hunting zones, by using specified combinations of features, terrain, vegetation, or restricted zones. Suppose you have to locate a new landfill. One of the factors in landfill siting is the access to paved roads within a limited distance of the cantonment area. Grass can be used to find all locations meeting these requirements. The results of any of these analyses can be displayed in virtually any format tailored to meet your particular needs, including placing them directly into required documents like environmental impact statements. We've gotten some idea of the potential uses of grass for your installation. Now let's look at a specific example of how grass is being used at an Army installation. At Fort Hood, one weapon system requires a five kilometer line of clear sight for training. Using conventional survey techniques, only a few appropriate training areas could be found. And because of that, those areas were being heavily used by this one particular tank. Uh, we determined in a hurry that these areas were being used too much and that the uh, soil was being terribly disturbed, the grasslands were being degraded at a very, very rapid rate. And if we continued as we were, we were going to end up with a, a virtual desert. Emmett Gray head of Fort Hood Environmental Office, approached the trainers with a plan to locate and develop more training areas using grass. They li liked the idea since it met their training scenarios. In such a uh, system, we would spread the hurt, so to speak. We would have the same amount of training going on, but in a greater area. Uh, this suited my needs as a land manager tremendously. It suited their needs as a, as a, a training exercise. I actually better since they had more land to deal with. Higher level authorities are also taking an interest in grass, like Colonel Kelsey of the Army's Environmental Office. The National Environmental Policy Act and the President's Council on Environmental Quality require that consequences of proposed actions be fully considered and integrated into the planning and decision-making process. For years, the Army has searched for tools and methodologies to develop and present high-quality environmental analyses to decision-makers and the public. The Construction Engineer Research Laboratory has developed the best currently available tool to assure this commitment to excellent analysis. The three greatest benefits of grass from the NEPA perspective are first, that the environmentalist now has the ability to get involved with projects and project planning at an early phase and assist the proponent in designing in desired mitigations. Secondly, I think the advancement in quality of environmental documentation will be significant, both from an analysis and graphic presentation perspective. And finally, and this too is related to excellence in analysis, is the objectivity of our analyses and the associated credibility gained through the process. This is accomplished while reducing the cost and time normally associated with environmental analysis. What do you need to implement grass at your location? A GIS has four components. The analysis software, the installation specific data, the computer hardware, and the operating staff. USA Searle has developed the grass software component over the last several years. It is publicly available software for governmental agencies with land management or environmental planning requirements. The extensive family of options are designed to be accessed through user-friendly menus. Only minimal training is required to begin to make grass responsive to your needs. The second component is the installation's specific data layers. The layers most commonly included are vegetation or land cover, topography, installation boundaries, training areas, roads and trails.
Additional layers can also be added later. Remember, you may not have to collect and enter as many layers as you first think, because some can be created or derived from others. For example, slope and aspect layers can be derived automatically from elevation data. On the other hand, the more specific the questions you want to ask, the more detailed the map layers must be, and usually the higher the cost to collect and enter the necessary data. Besides the data you already have at your installation, other types are available. Remote sensing can include traditional techniques such as aerial photography, as well as the use of data collected by sensors in satellites or aircraft. Aerial photography usually has to be interpreted and then transferred into the installation base map before it can be entered into GRASS. Data collected by satellite, on the other hand, comes in computer-ready form on digital tapes. The new Landsat thematic mapper data have resolution down to 30 meters on an edge, suitable for many installation applications. Though it must be scanned to get into computer form, high altitude false color images are inexpensive and will even resolve individual trees and cars. Topographic data for your installation can also be acquired in computer-ready digital form. Data which are not already in digital form need to be digitized. The GRASS software also includes utilities to construct this kind of computer data. Of course, your system is more than just software and data. It also includes the third component, the computer equipment or hardware. GRASS has been established on the MassComp and Sun Mini computers. It is possible to run it on any computer which uses the Unix operating system. The Unix operating environment ensures that GRASS code can be ported to new computers such as the AT&T 3B2 or other microcomputers. It will also interface with the Sperry computer required at every installation facilities engineer's office. Besides the computer itself, a monitor and color display terminal, a printer and plotter are usually necessary. Hardware costs are currently in the range of $50,000 for the entire configuration. In time, this will drop as computer costs go down and as GRASS is ported from the mini to the micro computer level. The fourth and very important component is the operating staff. Do you and your staff have to be computer specialists? No. GRASS is very user-friendly and interactive. A professional with minimal previous computer exposure will be able to obtain useful GRASS analyses after some initial training. However, maintenance requires a trained technical assistant on your staff, knowledgeable in regular computer system support, and largely dedicated to GRASS support. GRASS can help you whenever you need to access information on your installation quickly, to determine aerial planimetric amounts, to combine, overlay, or analyze the information to answer specific questions, to compare alternatives, or to predict the effects of certain events. If you're not satisfied with hand-drawn, out-of-date maps, using GRASS can help improve your effectiveness as an installation manager and make better use of limited manpower and smaller budgets. GRASS can help you take better care of the resources for which you are responsible.